And Mario, you've seen a lot of things play out in the markets. I just wonder where you put everything that's happening right now, what you think of AMC in particular. Well, let's talk about the pluses of AMC in the last several months. First, Zasloft is going to change back the windows that Warner put in place. Namely, he's going to use a, a, a better model than just cutting them off and go directly uh, to uh, streaming. Secondly, uh, you do have an ability to take what they generate and consolidate the theatrical theater market by buying other chains. Third, you saw from Quiet Place, and by the way, I like your new digs there, and I hope to someday stop by and see you on the second floor, but, and all of you. Uh, we look forward to it. And uh, we love it. And, uh, you know, you, so you have a lot of these positives, uh, Becky. And then we step back and say, okay, what is a smart guy like Adam Aaron going to do when he has uh, the, the uh, capacity coming back to the uh, occupancy? He's got a 25 million customer base uh, that he knows the data on. And then what else is he going to do? So those are the pluses. On the other side, as you point out, there's like 500 million shares selling at 38. So, uh, you know, and they still have about five billion of debt. And what does the business do? And what and what happens long term over the next five to ten years? Uh, will they, uh, because the uh, Paramount decision, the decree of 18, 1948, sorry about that, was changed? What does that mean with regards to his ability to create content? Is he going to get a piece of stream? So those are the pluses. From my end, I have an old saying that I learned uh, years ago: either you make dust, that is, you buy the stock. Eat dust that or you're shorted right now or get out of the way. We don't own this, but we have a conference tomorrow, our 13th annual meter and entertainment. We have Marcus showing up. We have Reading showing up. And we'll have other theater chains uh, looking. And so we can look at companies and see what they think about the, the revenues at the box office. So that's it. Mario, what media and entertainment stocks do you own right now? Well, no, let's step back and say the following. We have content streaming. Let's talk about streaming. Spotify has 400 plus million subscribers and they're getting more paid uh, subscribers. Uh, but I like the content producers uh, uh, in the music area. Vivendi is doing something in terms of the spinoff. There's some arm wrestling over how they handle taxes. Clearly, Bollore at the top is uh, putting, uh, I, let's not say helping his cause uh, through his ownership of the uh, of the stock because of the French taxes. But I like Vivendi. It's, uh, it's about a, a billion shares at uh, selling around 30 euro. Uh, then I like Sony Music. Sony uh, itself is about $100 a share with about 1.3 billion shares, 130 billion market cap. They've got a lot of things going for them, including, you know, PlayStation 5 and uh, a streaming on, uh, on that part. So that's part of it. Then the theatrical, I have to tell you, Zaz, uh, Zaslov has done a terrific job. Look what he did immediately. He changed the name back to Warner Brothers and under it, Discovery. And what that tells the entire content ecosystem, hey, guys, I, uh, gals, we know what you're doing. We're here. We're going to be uh, working with you. And that's a totally different feeling out in uh, the content producers on a global basis. Plus, he has a pretty good handle on the global marketplace. So, but do I want to own it right now? You've got 600-odd million shares outstanding. Telephone's going to get 1.6 billion shares, and I hope they use that as a cap shrink, but we won't know that for a year out. Two years out, he's going to have pretty good numbers, even though he's starting with a $48 billion of debt. The other one I have to tell you is uh, I do like what uh, uh, they're doing at Viacom. Uh, clearly, uh, uh, Paramount uh, Plus uh, and the uh, content production and the uh, ability to cherry pick their content. Uh, the stock's around 40 with about... Uh, 650 million shares, and they were one of the few that took advantage of the hype of the stock when, the sh uh, when you had that uh, Keiko's uh, right. take right. the stock up. So that's it. Uh, in addition to that, Comcast and Disney are terrific, but these are 350 billion type market cap on the equity. So I, I like the morsels that will be part of whatever the dynamic is on ongoing, Becky. But, but which of those big guys do you actually own? I mean, Viacom. Oh, I own, uh, let's uh, uh, share, uh, National Amusements reduced their uh, voting stock down from uh, 40 million to 30 million. We own, of the 42 million outstanding, of which the uh, National Amusement does, we own three and a half million. Uh, so that's about 35% of the vote. And uh, of the voting stock not controlled by National Amusement. So we own that one. 
Uh, and uh, we like everything that Malone does. We created something called Media Mogul Fund. And obviously, uh, uh, like the way he, he and Maffei's fingerprints are on a lot of things. So they've done a good job. In the television area, linear television, there's a lot going on. Next Star is presenting tomorrow, and they've done a great job. Perry Sook has put it together. Terrific earnings over the next year. Next year is another election, and uh, great uh, for broadcasters. Uh, but in particular, I will single out uh, two companies. One is Sinclair with about 75 million shares, SBGI around $33, $4 a share. It's got a market cap. But you've got to separate the regional sports networks from the broadcasting part. It's non collateralized, and we'll figure out what they're going to do there. Sports are back, live entertainment is back, and the, the Knicks are playing tonight. Uh, down three to one. Independent of that, the other one is Televisa. Grupo Televisa has uh, Sybilis TV, appropriately or so, located in Mexico City. They've got about uh, 550 million shares outstanding. And they're taking their content production, X News, Becky, and they're putting it into Univision. And Univision is now run by Wade Davis, like, who came out of uh, Viacom as the CFO. And that, uh, hopefully, within a year or two, will go public, uh, maybe less, <laughs> maybe six months. And they will own 45% uh, of Univision. And you get that free. They do a billion dollars in cable in Mexico. Now, you're not going to pay 18 times cash flow for Mexican cable, but you're going to pay more than uh, seven or eight times. So I like Televisa. The stock's uh, $13.30, I think, yesterday. And I think you got a 50% mover in that. So and that's the media play that I'm looking at. And there's a lot more going on. But Warner, Warner Brothers Discovery, you like what David Zaslav is doing. You like what Malone is doing and will follow him into just about anything. But you're hesitant to get into this stock right now because you want to wait and see what happens? Well, Becky, there's 600 million shares outstanding. No, 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 no. There's 1.6 billion shares that AT&T is going to dump on a market, uh, somehow extract themselves. For every share of AT&T, I think there's 7.1 billion shares of AT&T, and they, they will own 1.6, so you get almost 0.23 share of Discovery. So if Discovery can be edged up for, for whatever reason to 40, you've got almost $9 a share of, tele of Discovery in telephone. The stock's 30, so I like it. I think you'll make 50%, but you've got to have that speed bump and be aware of it, that's all. And, and then also, we know that you are somebody who is always looking for lovemaking when it comes to media mergers. You've got the merger master's book right behind you. You like well, Viacom right now. Uh, is that you because, know. yeah, I know, I, that we, we know, Mario, but, but is that, you like Viacom and what they're doing right now. Is that because you see them as a, either a potential suitor or someone who gets bought? No, think of it another way. Why did Amazon buy MGM and the, for the content? What's, uh, you know, What's Brian going to do with Comcast uh, on a global basis? Uh, what is Amazon really up to? Are they feeding Prime? Or are they trying to get into the content business? If you're willing to pay that for MGM, you know, what do you pay for Paramount? What do you put on the economic values? And all I know is that you can make a significant amount of money in Viacom and with a limited downside. Now, you got to worry something about, you know, the corporate glo global marketplace. You got to worry about tax structures. But there's a a lot of pluses in the picture. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.